Having entered the dashboard, I'm going to head over to the left hand side which is the control panel where all my projects can be created, edited and deleted if required. I'm going to click here to create a new project and you will see I've now got the pop-up screen to allow me to do this. I will give my project a name and you can see it has been date stamped next to it. I can now select an application and in this case it's a car park so I'm going to select mixed use. I've now got the option to give the run and option a specific name but for the purposes of this demonstration I will leave it as it is. I now need to apply my changes here. You can now see my project is active within the control panel. You can add as many projects and as many runs and options within each project as you need within the control panel. The next step is to add in the hydraulic design parameters for each channel run. You'll see all of the fields are initially pre-populated with default values and these should be changed to meet the site specific design parameters. I can enter the total channel length here and for a simple catchment area I simply fill in the total area or average catchment width here. For a complex catchment area this can be input by clicking here. Additional channel sections and drainage catchment areas can be added to represent almost any site layout or configuration. I'll quickly add in a new section here. Furthermore you can add specific supplementary catchment areas both upstream and downstream of a channel run which I'll do now. There is also the option to allow for an average longitudinal slope of the channel if required. However for this example I'm keeping it at 0% assuming the channel will be laid flat. Once you are satisfied with the inputs you have made, simply click here to apply them. The runoff coefficient defaults to 1, meaning that 100% of the catchment area will be draining to the channel. You can however adjust this figure accordingly to suit the finished surface, in order to make allowance for depression storage. If you already know the rainfall intensity for your project, you can enter the figure directly here. Alternatively, you can select the location of your site from the map and input the return period, storm duration and add an allowance for climate change if required. For extreme rainfall events, the runoff coefficient will default back to 1 as it is assumed the depression storage on the surface will be saturated. This can however still be overwritten if required. You will note there is also the option to add in point inflows to account for additional flow such as a rainwater downpipe. On the design specification panel you can see the product range that has been selected. However you can change the application and product type at any time by clicking on the appropriate application box and selecting a chosen product. You can choose to select a specific channel size by clicking here. Alternatively the software can optimise for you. Clicking on the Optimise by Section button will propose the smallest channel sizes that can carry the design flow required. In addition, there is the option to optimise per product length, which is usually 1 metre. To review the optimised channel summary, click on the Option Summary box which will generate a pop-up. You can see this box also gives indicative volumes for excavation and concrete that would be required on site. Where channel designs result in the flow being fully contained within the channel, you can see Design Complete in green. There is the option to review channel resilience by clicking here. This allows you to input anticipated sedimentation rates and density for the site. If you then propose a maintenance period, the result will show either fail if the period is too infrequent, or pass if it is sufficient to ensure the channel would not overflow within this period. We'll now reset optimization and select a small channel. If the selected channel overflows, you can see the channel overflow result here. Where this happens, there is the option to review surface storage in the design by clicking here. You can see this brings up a pop-up which allows you to input slopes for the drainage catchment area and review the maximum ponding width and depth that would occur at the surface. I can then apply these changes by clicking here. We'll now take the channel size back to a larger product and you can see that the channel status shows design complete. So we can now look at project outputs. 
outputs can be provided for either part or all of the project and can be generated in CSV and PDF formats. If you now click on the attenuation button, another pop-up will appear, allowing you to set the required parameters for the site. The software has the ability to estimate the approximate volume of attenuation storage that may be required for a project and compare it with the volume of storage available in the chosen channel design. Additional contributing areas such as roofs can be added in and once the maximum permitted outflow is input, click the calculate button. A selection of attenuation options is then suggested utilising Akko Stormbricks attenuation tanks and these can be saved by clicking apply and close. We're always available to help and options on how to contact us can be found by clicking on the can we help option here. You can send us a query, call our support team and we also have a knowledge database within this section. That completes this demonstration of the ACO Hydraulic Design software. Thank you for watching.